It's four years since the e-tron was launched and marked the start of Audi's electric journey. In fact, back in 2018, towards the latter half, the e-tron came to India on a roadshow. It was shown to potential customers, also to the media. But then obviously the pandemic hit, the brakes were put on its launch plans and then we got the e-tron post-pandemic. And now we have an updated e-tron. Now, there are four major pillars on the updates. The first is styling. There are styling improvements. There's also a now flatter 2D logo. So we will talk about that in a bit. There is more range. Obviously, electric cars range is a big talking point. So there's up to 50 kilometers more range in all the models. In fact, the battery packs have also increased in size. So we will talk about that. And because this is the Evo India channel, we shall be focusing on the sportiness. Now, Audi says that both the e-tron as well as the SQ8 has been improved in terms of its handling, in terms of its ride comfort, in terms of the planted feel. Even the ESC has been slackened a bit. The SQ8 is actually an all new model. This is the sporty e-tron and it gets three motors, two motors on the rear axle to give it more of a rear drive character so you feel that sportiness also got firmer suspension and a little bit more aggressive body kit whether this is coming to India we are still not sure it won't be at the start the e-tron will come to India this updated version in June of next year and before I forget I must point out that this is no longer called the e-tron it's called the Q8 e-tron Four years ago, the e-tron was the only electric car in Audi's lineup, but now everything is moving towards electrification. So e-tron is going to be the umbrella brand for all the electric cars. The Q8 e-tron sits right at the top currently of Audi's portfolio. This is going to come to India in both the Sportback as well as the regular SUV body style in both the 50 as well as 55 battery packs. How do these updated cars perform? Let's find out. But before we go ahead, don't forget to hit that like button. Share this video with like-minded enthusiasts. And if you enjoy this video, do give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think about India's move towards electrification. Drop it in the comments below. So the big update to the exterior is this mask for the grille. So it's become wider now. It's obviously the trademark Audi hexagonal grille, but it stretches off right to the sides. And this, the gloss black that you can see, you can also specify it in different colors. So that is an option. The grille is blanked out. This is an electric car, so it doesn't need that much cooling. But there are slats that open up depending on the cooling that the battery requires. The Audi, the four rings, this is new, this is flatter and you also get an LED bar that connects the headlamps so that gives it that more EV kind of look. At the bottom of the grille and the bumpers, these are also new. Over on the sides, what you will notice are the new wheels. This shroud, it obviously airs aerodynamics and you also have slats in the front bumper that improves the aerodynamics. What you will notice are these bullet cameras. Now, this is coming to India. In the past, we had regular wing mirrors, but the Q8 e-tron will have these bullet cameras. So on the doors, you have the screens. We'll show that to you when we go inside. So that's a cool touch, a very techy touch. Another new feature, which is going to be rolled out across the range is this Audi and the model type that is laser etched onto the B pillar that will progressively be reflected across the entire Audi range. The profile, it remains unchanged. This is the SUV profile. We will also talk about the Sportback, which is going to come to India. And over at the rear, there are small detail improvements to the tail lamps. You have this rhombus at the prefix for the model designation. That's also new. The diffuser is also slightly new, but this looks like a Neutron that you're familiar with, with small updates. Now, next to me, that's the SQ8. Whether it's coming to India, no clue, but we will talk about it. Now, you have a more aggressive grill. This blue, it looks really stunning. This is also available in black, and I think the black looks super cool. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. So, like I said, this mask can be in a different color. This is, whatever, a silverish. You can notice the lighting that connects the two headlamps, the flatter Audi rings that's more visible out here, and of course, the rear. So we'll quickly jump across to the rear. And over on the rear, the Sportback, it has this SUV coupe body style. This is going to come to India, the body shape. But the SQ8, no idea. Do you want the SQ8 to come to India? Let us know in the comments below. The major area of improvement on the Q8 e-tron is range. 
Now, this has been done by two ways. The first is an improved focus on aerodynamics that includes the air curtains on the front bumpers, the edges of the front bumpers, the underbody shrouding. So all of that has given it better aero performance. It has gone down by 0.2 CD, which is actually a lot in the aerodynamic world. And the second is more efficiency from the electric motors, both on the front as well as the rear axle. Also, the battery capacity has improved. So the size of the battery packs, they remain the same, but improved packaging means that more cells can be packed in. So the current 50 actually has the same battery capacity as the outgoing 55. So that means that the power goes up as well as the range goes up. So now the entry point into the Q8 e-tron family, the 50, that gets a 95 kilowatt hour battery. It puts out 335 bhp. The range, it goes up by 44% to 505 bhp. That is for the sport pack body shape, the coupe body line. It gives it a little bit better aero, so it got 20 kilometers more range than the regular SUV body style. And 0 to 100 is now in six seconds. The one that I'm driving, this is the 55. It gets the new 114 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the range, it goes up by 32% and goes up to 600 kilometers on the spot back body shape. The zero to 100 kilometers per hour time, that drops down to 5.6 seconds. It of course has two motors. This is Quattro all wheel drive. All versions of the e-tron run on adaptive air suspension and that's where another significant area of focus has been put into. So the dampers, they aren't any stiffer but the up-down movement, that vertical movement has been reduced a bit. So earlier we talked about the e-tron having this gently loping ride, that slight movement in the body in the vertical direction, that has been curbed to a greater extent. So now it feels a little bit more planted. So over these roads which are slightly wavy, it still is a little more planted and doesn't move around too much so it gives you a little bit more confidence in the car without compromising on the ride comfort the steering ratio has also been stiffened up the front axle has become stiffer and all of that these small improvements add to quantifiable and noticeable improvements in the dynamics So Audi has even put numbers to it. So the agility has improved by 10%. The handling in terms of the steering angle that is required, that is reduced by 10%. The steering precision has improved by 10%. The steering weighting and feel, basic steering feel has improved by 20%. And the pitch and roll in the body movements has reduced by 10%. Audi also claims that the fast charging has improved with the Q8 e-tron. So you get 20 to 80% charge in 26 minutes and 10 to 80% charge in 31 minutes. But that's of course if you find a proper fast DC charger, which is very, very rare in India. So these numbers are basically academic for us. In terms of the interiors, nothing really has changed. After all, why fix it if it ain't broke? This three screen layout, this is familiar to anybody who has been into any current Audi. It works really well. The ergonomics are very good. The fit finish, the quality is top notch, unimpeachable. You will notice that there is no sunroof, but obviously the Indian cars are going to come equipped with the panoramic sunroof. This is a really key thing that you have to have in India. I'm sure the Indian versions will also get ventilated seats now, but what I'm not sure about are these cameras that replace the wing mirrors. Now the product specialist out here, he's been saying that the Indian team have been asking for these digital wing mirrors. So they are working to get this on the Indian cars. Whether it'll be there at launch is a big question mark. I'm not sure, but I will tell you that this does take some getting used to because you're always looking out there at the wing mirror there's nothing there then you have to look down and then you see the screen so it takes a bit of time to get used to it now it's been two days that i've been driving it and i'm still not 100 percent out there with this also sometimes when you're pulling out at junctions you look around at the wing mirror you can't do all that with this but it is also very cool, especially in the way it works. It's got the blind spot monitoring that is integrated into it. So it either glows green or red. You can adjust it via the touchscreen out here. So that's another cool touch. So it's a very techy kind of thing. And I'm sure that the customers for the Q8 e-tron will love it, but it takes some getting used to. I won't kid you about that. 
the steering response while it has improved really slightly 10% right it's hardly anything how will you even notice it but you do tend to notice it you're going around these nice smooth corners and you realize that you don't have to fidget with the steering you don't have to put it into the corner and then correct it that's not there and that is that small improvement in the steering precision just one steering movement and the car tracks where you want it to go there's no minor adjustments that you need to make to the steering these are small things which you rarely even notice but over a couple of hours of driving that's when you realize that yeah this is a difference this is a noticeable improvement over the earlier e-tron and i know that because we have long term tested the e-tron on the evo india fleet in fact just 3 4 months ago we had the e-tron with us real world range that we got with the e-tron was around 320 325 km so it could do pune mumbai and back to pune but we always top it off in mumbai because also we're not 100% sure of our own ability to not use all the performance on the expressway so we always had to slightly top it up juice it up in mumbai before coming back to pune with this with the 50 kilometers improvement in range now it will make mumbai pune and back to pune doable on a single charge without thinking without worrying about anything so that small jump in the range will actually make a big difference to a lot of people who use it for intercity commutes as well not just intercity but intercity commutes can be done without worrying about range anxiety all in all small improvements to the e-tron the new name q8 e-tron the face the new grill the audi logo the 2d logo the improvement in range the slight improvement in the dynamics in the handling in the character of the car i'm sure it will come with a slight increase in price also but this still remains one of the nicest luxury suvs that you can get your hands on improvements on the Q8 e-tron are taken up a notch with this the SQ8 so it retains the same battery pack as the 55 version but you get a total of 496 bhp now and you get 0 to 100 in 4.5 seconds that is properly quick you also get three motors so one on the front axle and two on the rear axle so the twin motors obviously give you that better turn of speed but it also gives it a slightly more rear biased character so when you're gunning it round corners you can feel that little rear bias to the power distribution it obviously has got active torque vectoring so it goes round corners much faster much harder and you can get on the power much earlier without it descending either into understeer or the esc cutting in in fact speaking about the esc the esc intervention has been reduced a bit so it does feel a little bit more playful before things start to get reined in you also have a sharper steering steering response has improved the suspension we spoke about it in the Q8 it has become a little bit firmer not at the expense of comfort but it reduces that vertical movement over here the springs and dampers have been stiffened even more this has got the same adaptive suspension but it's a little bit stiffer so it does feel a little bit more agile and it does feel a little bit more sporty and that is crucial the instant you step into the SQ8 you feel that this is a little bit more sporty you feel a little bit firmer the comfort has gone down a bit not uncontrollably and it's not uncomfortable or anything like that but this feels like a performance car plus on the inside now you get this dimpled steering wheel edges so that gives it that slight sporty feel the seats have got the s badging on it it's got this quilted kind of pattern so small improvements but it definitely feels a bit sportier it looks a bit sportier that whole vibe is there what they haven't done is inject artificial sporty sounds that would have been silly an electric car the whole point of an electric car is silent so even though it is faster to put your foot down and you get this instant turn of speed but you don't need weird noises to be accompanying that and that thankfully hasn't been done on the SQ8 the turn of speed on the SQ8 is quite something so i'm going to put my foot down 
zero to hundred four point five seconds, and it just keeps on accelerating until well you get caught by the cops. So <laughs> it's just effortless, and that's the beauty of electric cars: that effortlessness of the performance. You have that easy driving capability, and when you step on it, it just picks up speed so ferociously, yet without even trying. It's just so easy to harness all that power, all that performance. All that weight is down low. The center of gravity is low. So when you're gunning it around corners, the way it grips is quite something. But the thing that I always liked about the e-tron, and the same holds true with the Q8 e-tron, is that the comfort is also there. This is a very usable electric car, and the S Q8 is a very usable fast electric car. And I don't see why this should not come to India. Obviously, this will be more expensive than the e-tron, but it's a nice addition to the range. Like you have the regular combustion engine Q8, and you also have the RS Q8. And the RS Q8 has got good response in the country. There are quite a few running around in the country, so I don't see why the S Q8 would not find buyers. In fact, it'll be a great halo car. It's not required at the start. So in June, when the Q8 comes in. You don't need the SQ8 to come in, but maybe end of the year or early the year after that, this can be a great halo car for the entire electric range to sit alongside the e-tron GT, which by then might also get updated. So if the Audi guys are watching it, well, obviously they are watching this. You should bring the SQ8 to India. This won't be unusable in our Indian conditions, and it will be a cool hero car. A whole halo car for the entire e-tron range. I guess by end of next year you will also have the Q4 e-tron, so a proper, full, packed range. This place is absolutely stunning. The views, my word! This is sort of like the Great Ocean Road, the road running parallel to the Med on my right. The mountains, the hills, the lava rocks. <sighs> We've traveled the world. We've seen places that every time you travel, you find something new, find something out of this world. And yesterday, when we were driving through those lava fields, that sort of looks like Mordor from Lord of the Rings. And they were saying that there are locations cows that have come, and the next Lord of the Rings might actually be shot out there. It's a shame we couldn't shoot there because we couldn't get permissions to shoot there. But what a stunning place! Even this stunning. Ridiculous. There is an obvious penalty to be paid for performance, and that is the range. The range drops from 600 kilometers to 513 kilometers. So, real world, you'd probably get around 300 kilometers, which is the same as the earlier e-tron, which honestly is pretty good. <laughs> So you're looking at small improvements to the e-tron. You get a new name, the Q8 e-tron. You get improved exterior styling, especially on the nose. You get better dynamics, including good ride, but better in terms of stability. You also get a higher performance version. And if you make a lot of noise on our comments below, Audi might bring that to India. You also might be looking at a slight increase in price, but overall, the Q8 e-tron it remains the nicest luxury electric SUV that you can buy, at least as of now.